Hi guys and welcome back to another Dot Race video and today we're going to be playing MotoGP 23. Today I have a rather unique challenge to try here in the Red Bull ring and that is to take a ride through penalty and in hopes to still win in this track. Ladies and gentlemen, let's see how well we fare. So here we go then guys and girls, starting from the back of the grid as well just to make things rather interesting. I am confident for this one. But it all depends who gets to the front. Because if cast your minds back the last time we tried something like this, one of the two riders got to the front and then he had a bit of a gap to make things rather difficult for us. So let's see just how well we get on. I know that the uh, the AI, the 120% difficulty AI aren't that great here in Red Bull Ring. There's a couple of points on this circuit which they do struggle at. 2A and 2B being these corners here, they do struggle at there. So I think I might have a chance. I don't think it'll be as easy as the likes of this of Assen is, the Dutch TT. I think it would have been much easier to do that challenge there. But, I mean, we almost lapped the entire grid in Assen in one full 100% race against hardest difficulty AI without too much of a problem, really. I think we just came up short because I made a small mistake where I downshifted the first gear into the Wienschlang. And then... I just took too long to try and get past some riders here as we make massive contact with Jorge Martí. What the hell happened then? Well, I'm not going to question it. <laughs> penalty, I guess. So we'll do a ride-through penalty then. <laughs> That's how it's going to work in today's video. But this is what I feared. I did fear that we would get one rider who would break away from the pact. And right now, that is in the form of Peko Banyaya. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're diving into the pits now. And this will commence... Our challenge from the ride through penalty from the back of the grid to first place. Can it be done? Look how many riders are going past. We're probably going to lose around 20 plus seconds in this pit lane. It's not too bad. I know some pits are probably worse. I think we might be all right. It all depends how much it's going to be. If the gap is more than 30 seconds then this challenge is going to be extremely difficult because we not only need to be a second quicker than Peko, we'd need to be even more. That's the that's what I'm looking at right now. 26 seconds is the gap. It might go to 28 here. It's close. Call it 28 seconds there. We need to be a second a lap quicker than Peko Banyaya now just to get on target with him for the latter stage of this race. Let's crack on. Let's see how we get on. It all depends what lap times they start doing. To be honest, the last time I came here to the Red Bull Ring of Austria would have been in the career mode. And we were on the Fax Ducati, and the bike was far superior than everyone else's. We've dominated with power setting one. I don't know what diff I don't know what lap times the difficulty of 120% AI can do when everyone's bike is fully upgraded. So we'll have to see how it goes. But all I can see is that we are 27 and a half seconds behind. From your motor GP world champion. So, game on. Game on, ladies and gentlemen. If you're enjoying this video, if you do at any point, don't forget to like and subscribe. It does help out the channel and it helps us grow. And of course, keeps me uh, keeps me motivated to use more crazy ride through ideas like this, more penalties, more challenges to do, etc. etc. So definitely get subscribed and let me know if you enjoy the video as well. But uh, first blow has been hit. Pekka Magnaia sets a 129.636. We're going to complete our lap, which is going to be just less than 20 seconds less. It was about 17 seconds slower than Pekka Magnaia. Better than I expected. So that's not too bad. Oh, goodness me. Really tight to the apex there. We're already finding 17 seconds within the first split. It's going to be an absolute job of consistency here in this one here today. I would imagine... Too many mistakes, and then that's it. We've got to go for it here, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, we've said it so many times through my MotoGP 23 career mode. I see it from the Ace Academies and the Ace, uh, the Doctor Ace pit crew members. Full send. That is exactly what we're going to do here today. Hashtag full send with the ride through penalty. I'm feeling good on this one. I really am. I have a tremendous amount of confidence that we can do this. I just don't know how it's going to fare in the middle stage of the race. Because don't forget, we might be able to do these lap times to claw back on the time to Peko, But we have to get past 21 other riders. 
And if we have a moment where we touch Jorge Martin like we did into Roush Corner just uh, on the two laps ago, we could have a very difficult time to get through. Or lo and behold, worst thing could happen. One of those right AI riders could take us out. So big pressure here today, and I'm going for it. I've seen the comments about certain suggestions where we try reducing the AI difficulty and do these things. I want to get it done on the max. The maximum difficulty. There we go. Cross the line. Our first lap time, a 128.201. Means we are 1.4 seconds quicker than Peko. I think we can do better than that. I think we get into the 127s. And if that's the case, it's game on. If we start dropping back to the 129s or 130s, oh, oh, off the circuit, ever so slightly there, just, just uh, dicing with death, coming out of 2B. And now into the Ramus corner, we are still positive on the Delta, so that's good stuff so far. Now, I do have some availability to use fuel setting 3. I don't want to use it yet. I want to try and save that for when I really need it. I don't think... I can use it, because I think that the fuel depletes extremely quickly here around the Red Bull ring, so I don't know where I could find that opportunity to use it. Now, this is what I was concerned about. Take a look at the map in the bottom left corner of your screen. Of course, ignoring the gap to us to Takanakagami, we'll catch him up in about four laps. But Peko is quite far ahead of Jack Miller in second, and in turn, Enea Bastianini in third place. So initial feedback and thoughts are that maybe this is a fight for the podium for us, maybe not to catch up Peko, but 25 seconds, there is still a lot of time left in this one, and another lap time there, at least a second quicker than your World Championship leader, so, well, World Championship winner, so we should be okay, I hope. <laughs> I'm actually second guessing this a bit now, I just wanted to start this video and just go for it, and now I'm a little bit nervous. We will catch up to Taka very soon though, which is good. Of course, they're not being vastly far behind. And the good thing about this as well is that each and every overtake will be reflected on the left-hand side of your screen for the live tower. Now, of course, when we were doing the Lap Everyone Challenge, you couldn't really tell where you were again unless you consulted the names above uh, the riders' heads, etc. So it's good to see that we will actually be moving up that live standings on your left-hand side of your screen. So into the Schloss Gold, then. We are... Three seconds adrift from Takaka Nakagami. We should make pretty easy job getting through on the Japanese. The only problem is, is where do we find him? There's a couple of points in this track where they go really slow. I don't want to be meeting anyone in 2A and 2B for the uh, for the change direction. For the, uh, for the newer style chicane that was added in a couple of years ago. I don't want to be catching up to them there because they break really slowly there and it, it can really knock you off. Turn one, not so bad because I can go for the lunge as long as I stay on the middle to the right hand side of the circuit. Another good lap time coming in, but here we go. We've found riders. We have caught them up within four laps. Here we go. We will meet Tacker in that 2A, 2B, exactly what I thought we would. Here we go then. On the brakes as late as... Look at that. That's exactly what I feared. Exactly what I was thinking. I knew he'd be dead slow there. I thought I'd be all right if I stayed on the left-hand side. That's lost me eight tenths of a second. Thanks, Taka. I need to get through. I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to go full send here. I've got to get through as quickly as possible. Because I can't be messing around and faffing around with riders at the back of the grid. We ain't got time for that. I'm running out of lap times. I've got to go for it. There's Digia. He's occupying 20th. Eight tenths of a second we lost on that small contact with... I guess it wasn't small, actually. It was rather a big hit into the rear of the LCR uh, Idemitsu Honda. And now into the left-hander. There is the number 49, Digia. He'll also go slow here. I can assure you this is the 120% difficulty AI. It's just that they, they do a lot of silly things around this circuit. You'll also notice it here onto the right-hander. They'll break really early there and start going out of shape. Sometimes they crash there as well, which is ever so often in the practice and qualifying. Around the outside of Jorge Martin. That's the second time we met Martin on the track and the second time we've made contact with the runner-up in the World Championship. And in that time, we lost uh, one point... Oh, good 1.3 seconds there. 1.4 seconds slower 
and now my best lap time set on lap number three. So, stay to the right hand side here because I don't want to hit Alex Rins going into the 2A corner, which we do get through. But I can't turn in early there because if the AI comes back and hits me whilst I turn into the left hand side there for 2B, it's over. And I'm going to be on the floor. So I don't fancy that happening. Not when I'm trying to get a job done. Seriously determined to get this one here done today. Was unable to be successful in Assen, but I want to be successful here today. On the break, look at Raul Fernandez ahead of us there. He had a bit of a moment on board the RNF Aprilia. Careful, Raul, careful. He is occupying the last points position. Alicia Spargren and 16th as we try and go the long way around on the 41. Not able to do so yet. But into the left-hander, possibly here. Yes, it opens up for a lunge around the outside, but Aleish will still have the inside apex and holds it well. However, we force our way through, and we are now up into 16th. And Raul Fernandez really slow there as well. I need to get through. I can't be messing around with riders like that. I need to get through. I need to get past and start cracking on to catch up to Peko. The gap has been 24 seconds quite a few lap times now and we're still in the 129s this is not good enough this is not good enough oh bumping into the rear of Augusto Fernandez I don't think he'll like that but I don't think he's going to like the overtake in a minute to show how much slower he actually is through on the tech 3 gas gas part 1 through on the tech 3 gas gas part 2 come on Paul don't go for a lunge yes thank you very much I actually thought he was going to try and uh, get past me there on the brakes. Oh, Jack Miller's gone down. Where's he crashed? He's crashed into the Schloss Gold. He was right up there in second place. So has that affected the riders behind him? If it has, we might be able to get some clear air quicker than I imagined. God, there's a lot of pressure on this one. Well. I tell you, I wasn't expecting so much nerves and pressure to be kicking off in this one. <laughs> I thought it'd be... Not too bad to catch them up and then get through them and we should be alright. Not smooth sailing, but I thought we'd be alright or in a good situation. I think we are. We've caught up rather quickly. I'm just concerned that with 20 laps to go, the gap is still over 20 seconds. That means we're not going to get the job done. Well, I'm not going to lose faith. I'm going to try and get through on Fabio. Look how the KTM was wobbling there on the brakes. Brad Binder would be proud of that one. Really tight the apex end for the Red Bull Mobile corner. For the final corner here in the Red Bull ring, we do get back into the 128s and critically a low 128. So that's really gathering that time back on Peko Banyaya. We are gobbling up the seconds now. And we should be able to make short work of the Repsol Honda Man, Juan Mir, which we do. Clean as you like. And then into the left-hander. This is turn three or turn two B. We are still on a good lap I'm just fixated with that gap on the left hand side of your screen not to Zarco, not to Vinales not to Mia but the gap to the winner, excuse me the race leader right now Peko Banyaya, the MotoGP winner can we catch up to him, I'm so determined in this one, I really am highly recommend you try this challenge as well if you enjoy this one, if you enjoyed uh, watching the video don't forget to try it out yourself Hardest difficulty in the game. Use a motorcycle that you want to use here in the Red Bull Ring of Austria. You should have a very good time, just like I'm having right now. Now, the gap is to Zarko one second. How quickly can we get onto the coattails of Johan Zarko? Oh, steady. A little bit off the circuit there. That's how Jorge Martin's victory went uh, awry back in, uh, was it 2017? 2018? I don't remember. It was when Marco Bezzecchi, uh, I think, took the victory because Martin touched the green on the last lap of the race. So, yeah, he got demoted one position. But we have caught up to Zarco then. He's going slow into the Nicky Lauda curve. So I'm going to try and get onto the rear of the GP23. Wait for the shadow here under the Shingar sign. And then break and get through into 2A. We are now into the top 10. 21 and a half seconds is the gap. Your MotoGP world champion, who's now already going into the second split near the uh, Roche corner. There he is. He's going into Roche now. Oh, when you see how far ahead he's, we might actually be able to see him over that barrier on the right hand side. <laughs> I couldn't see him. I did have a little look. 
when I couldn't see Pekko, but yeah, that's how far ahead he is. So right now is Maverick, whoa! Thank goodness he went off this, out my way there, because if I hit him, the chances are I would have gone down too there. Whew! <laughs> Little sigh of uh, relief there from your content creator here today. And then into the left-hander, we do have a couple of more Ducatis ahead of us. Two GP22s, as a matter of fact. Luca Marini and Alex Marquez. Don't know where Jack Miller went. Did Jack Miller retire from the race after he crashed? I can't say I noticed, but look how quickly we caught up to Luca Marini there. This is the lap times we needed. And it's good to see that we're actually getting through the riders now cleanly and quickly. So we're not losing too much time. That's another 128.2. Yeah, this pace, this is what we needed. This is the pace we need. Let's try and make short work of Alex Marquez as well then. Oh, bit of a wheelie. But it's okay. As I say, break at the shadow. Coming through. We are now up into the top seven. A little bit of gesticulation to Alex Marquez there. Is in fact, we were the one at fault there as we completely mess it up. Going into the left-hand side out of those two corners. Now onto the right-hand side for the Ramers. Quite a beautiful corner, that. Love to hit that tight apex. It's gorgeous. Do really like this track. and it, it grows on me every time I do a race here. Albeit a challenge as well. I just really enjoy it. So who's ahead of us there? That's Jack Miller. I see Jack Miller. So Miller is fourth. Oliveira fifth. And Mark Marquez in sixth place. Ladies and gentlemen, it's happening. Podium is definitely on offer here. But getting up to a race win, oh, <laughs> that's going to be hard, isn't it? A 100% race distance for the second time in about a week. <laughs> getting rather used to this now. Of course, we do 50% for the career mode. I do really enjoy the longer races. It's, it's good to get that feeling and just to keep on churning out the lap times. Now, it is looking a bit bleak. We will conclude lap number 11, thus meaning... 17, 18 laps to go with a 20 second advantage to Pecco. Unless we start putting in faster lap times, I I don't think it's going to happen. I need 127 lap times, to be honest. And this is where I'm going to lose time here because I'll be able to get through a Marquez, but can we get through an Oliveira as well? We can. Bit of contact, let him run it deep. Go back through. Can we get through now? We can. We're up into uh, fifth place. Jack Miller won't believe this when he sees it. Come on, Jack, move. Christ almighty, what was he doing then on the brakes? Occupying the middle of the circuit with your teammates trying to get through. I've got to get through, Jack. I ain't got time for you now, dude. Sorry. I do like you, Jack, but Brad Binder around the outside into turn five. The pressure is on. Knee is beginning to shake and tremble. <laughs> I don't know who does that when they sit down in a computer chair, but I have a habit of bouncing my knee when things get exciting. And this is happening now. 20 second is the gap to Pekka Banyaya. We need some cracking lap times now. We do have some fuel, though. We have a little bit of fuel to burn. How much time can we find with power setting three? I'm not ready to use it much yet. I might use a bit of spurt here and there. But for now, the lap times have got to stay on power setting two. Lost six tenths of a second trying to get past on Jack Miller there. That's annoying, but it is what it is. Across the line. Has Pecco made a mistake? Because that gap's come down to 18 seconds. Is Pecco Bagnaia doing us a little bit, bit of a favour here? I can see him in the distance. He's there breaking it at the uh, Ramos corner. Marco Vesecchi is ahead of him with an Air Bastini now going into that corner. I tell you what, I think this is game on. This is game on, ladies and gentlemen. We've got to absolutely go for it. We've got to nail this. We've got to get it absolutely perfect to consider a, a chance. But I think just keep getting the 128s that... Ideally the 127s, but we're close enough as it is. 128.8 is the last lap time, but that was faffing around with Jack Miller. Without him, 128.2s, 128.3s, 28.5s, it's not great, but it should be enough. This is it. This is game on. <laughs> Don't forget, like and subscribe if you enjoyed this one, because I've got a lot more videos like this to come. What we on here? Worth curve then for turn eight. 17 seconds is the gap. We, I feel quicker. I feel like I'm getting the hang of this now. I'm beginning to wonder if that hard rear was a mistake. 
I don't think I should have chosen the hard rear. Probably should have gone for the softer option. The harder rear was recommended the same as the front. I don't don't I don't regret the front, but I'm thinking maybe with the rear tire we could have been quicker and closer towards the front, but that's another 128 lap time. That's good. Just gotta keep in the low 128s. That's good enough for me. This a, that's a good lap time, that's a good sector. If we keep this up, we'll be right on Marco Bezeki's trail, probably before lap 20. Maybe earlier. How many time how much time are we taking away? I've got to see the gap. Gap currently is 8.5 to Marco Bezeki. What is the gap gonna be at the conclusion of this lap here? We've got to work that out as we go. Eight and a half seconds it is now. Let's see what it is towards the end of the lap. That's how we'll be able to gauge it. We have taken a few more tenths of a second away from Becco. This is on. It's got to be on. We're halfway race distance. And the gap is down to 15 seconds. It's on. It's definitely on, ladies and gentlemen. We could use a bit of power setting three as well if we need to. It's on. <laughs> I'm ready. Just got to keep it right. Bit of confidence is there. Lost a little bit into turn seven. I did a, a very quick practice lap or two a few moments ago. And I did drop the front ends there, and I, it was a bit surprising, really, because it didn't feel like I did anything particularly wrong, but I just dropped it, and I was like, oh my god. So I've had a little bit of nerves going into that corner for the past couple of lap times. Now, this is the interesting part. We dive into the final corner, we get onto the power, and the gap is still eight seconds. It looks like we're getting closer to Peko, Quicker than we're getting closer to Marco Bezzecchi as we go very tight. The apex, no! Oh, I've binned it! Oh, can you believe it? Oh, that's it. I've blown it. I've absolutely blown this challenge. 18 seconds to go. Oh, I've blown it. I'm going to have to get some incredible lap times now. What was the chances of that? Oh, I can't believe that. I cannot believe it. It's the same, isn't it? It's the same as Assen. One mistake is is too much. Oh, Bastianini's gone down. Podium is definitely on offer now. But for the race victory, I think that's gone. Ah, oh, those three, four seconds are going to kill me. I'm, they're going to be absolutely haunting the dreams of the good doctor. I can't believe that. I can't believe it. I am so tense right now. What was that? The gap is still 18 seconds. There's no way I can do it now, is there? Well, I'm still going to go for it. We're not going to end the video here. I can't believe that, though. Let's see what lap times we can do. I mean, we're losing five seconds in this one. The gap is actually still hovering around eight seconds when near Bastini. So the podium is definitely available. But that gap to Peko. I needed that time. I needed that time. See, that's the same thing I said in Aston when uh, when I made that mistake where I downshifted to first into the Vinge line, or to Steckenval, it might have been Steckenval. I went off the circuit and I lost five seconds. At the end of that video, we missed out by five seconds. Is it going to happen again? I think it very well will. As you can see, we can now no longer see Peko into turn three, but I can see Marco Betzeki. Oh, we're off the circuit again. Come on. 133.4 lap 15 will be haunting me forever oh can you believe it I am seething I'm so disappointed by myself I mean what I was ah all right oh, well it's not over yet it's not over yet I still feel we can get into the 127s it's gonna take a bit more effort a lot more speed and a lot more concentration. But as it stands, minor faux pas on lap 15 looks to be that we're going to get straight back into the thick of it on lap 16. Five seconds is the gap to the beast. Podium is good. It's not great, and it's not the purpose of today's video, but it's still positive. And I can still end the video on a high knowing that we did the ride-through penalty on the podium, but it's not over yet. Let's not think the worst. Gap is 16 seconds to Peko, and we have 12 laps to catch him. 
We've got to increase our speed here. It all depends as well how quickly we can we get past the beast. He's right there now. We have caught up to him rather quickly here. Ooh, steady on the brakes. Oh, I'm off the circuit, Arna. Oh, keeping it in. Oh. <laughs> Pressed every little bit of the brake then. I'm going to use the ride out device just to get the the wheel, <laughs> the rear end down. Oh, I'm pushing. I am absolutely on the limit here. I feel like I can go quicker though. I don't feel like this is my potential. I know we can be quicker. I, d I don't want to take too much risks at the same time. It's such a mind game, this one. Here is the Roche corner then. And out to turn seven, we go into one of the best corners in MotoGP. I love this corner here. Especially this quick change of direction. Oh, I touched the curb, I messed it up now. But yeah, the idea of turning from turn eight to turn nine, there's a small wheelie you get if you accelerate at the right moment. And then when the rider lifts up the front end, you can't turn in until it drops and it, it just feels so realistic. It's great. I like it a lot. But uh, here we go then. And Air Bastianini is two seconds ahead of us on circuit. I can use a bit of power setting three, but I'll save it for later. On to the brakes then. Brake there at the same point every time, apart from lap 15 evidently, because that's where I messed it up. 1.4. There's Peko in the distance, so we're, we're about where we were earlier. This is definitely going to be the, the, the lap 15 nightmare. Now coincidentally, I guess it's no coincidence actually, but lap 19 is where I messed up in the Assen video. So definitely around that halfway stage is where we begin to make a few mistakes. Tried the ride out device there, but I'll tell you what, that, that was worse. <laughs> the rear tyre actually span up more using the ride height device than it did without. So I think I'll go back to not using that on the next lap. Into the Schloss Gold. The podium is beckoning. Brad Binder, the man who won on slick tyres in the wet in this circuit, of course, back in 2021. Into the left hander then. The Roche corner turn seven. Only lost a few tenths of a second again, so that's, that's consistent pace. It's still very much there, but we've touched the kerb again. <laughs> I'm getting annoyed that I keep touching that kerb there because every time you touch it, the bike sits up immediately. Oh, look at the beast! What's he doing? What's he doing? Move! <laughs> I, can't, I can't be dealing with this pressure. This stress that's uh, building upon us in today's video. Inea, please. <laughs> that's going to be my luck. I go for the lunge and he takes me out. If you do, I'm going to rage. So move out the way, sunshine. Brad Binder's coming through. Don't you dare touch the apex there for the Nicky Lauda curve. And again, we've closed in a little bit closer to, to both Bez and Banyaya. 14 seconds is the gap. I don't know what lap times I, can, I need to be doing for that. I've got to get into the 127s, but I just can't. If I can't do it at this stage of the race, I probably can't. Tyre is beginning to wear. It's not bad. A little bit better with the ride height device there. I wanted to make sure that I, I got it right before I completely ignored the ride height use. It, it, it's easier to use the ride height because I don't have to balance the throttle. I can just hit the ride height device and sort of forget about it, but I need more time. Ah, if only I hadn't made that mistake. How much time did I lose on lap 15? Five seconds. We would be three seconds behind Bez and eight seconds behind Peko. Oh, and this one ends and I finish third or probably second. I am going to be ruining the day. I crashed on lap 15. I can't believe it. <laughs> I absolutely can't believe it. What an effort though. 30 minutes in, ladies and gentlemen. Time is ticking down. We've got to do something to catch up to Bez and to Peko Banyaya. Can it be done? I'm still going. I'm going to keep on pushing and I'm not going to end until either we crash and burn or we get what we want. Peko is actually only just coming out of 2B there. We are closing in. It's visible. And it's also quite evident with the gap on the left-hand side of your screen. But with eight laps to go, the gap is 13 seconds. I don't know what lap times Peko is doing, but I need to be going at least a second and a half quicker every lap. And that isn't so easy. Back onto the power. Tenth of a second lost on the delta. It's still good lap times for this stage of the race. As long as they're in the 28s, I think we're alright. But if we 
somehow just sneak into those 127s and get a bit of a rhythm, we could have every chance of winning this one. I'm just... I'm trying not to fixate my eyes on the left-hand side of your screen. I know you're probably doing it at home right now, but you, you just can't help to look at that gap. It's really exciting to see the gap disappear. It's not for them. It's one of the most terrifying experiences in the world when you see your gap disappear. But right now, it is going in the favour of Dr. Ace and Brad Binder. I tell you what, this could be a 127 after all. We've had to wait 20 laps for this. Is it going to be? Uh, probably not. No, it's not quite going to be, but it is going to be an improvement across the line. Oh, it's not, actually. 128.206. Very close to the lap times we desire. So we're still three seconds away from where we need to be. Without that five-second crash, we'd be right on the rear of Bez. <sighs> Tight to the apex there for 2A. Beautifully done for 2B, however. We're gaining a tenth and a bit here. Onto the brakes. And into the tight apex again. Beautiful corner, that. Beautiful. Just fills me with a joy every single time I tackle that corner correctly. A little bit of a wheelie with the KTM, but I feel better without the ride height device. Just feels natural to not use it. Gap is 11 seconds. 10 se Ooh. I, I'm, I'm working this out now. I, I, I'm not good with maths. That's my problem. Uh, uh, <laughs> what we need is a mathematician who's good at racing. And they could do this all on the fly. But I'm thinking now we need to get... This, is it still... T it's about 1.5 seconds still. We've got to be quicker. We're, we're definitely going in the right direction. And perfect of direction there into turn 8 and turn 9. Beautifully done with Brad Binder. On to the power. We are finding time. This is crucial. This is critical for our potential of success. Here today, there's Bez. He's in the penultimate corner. Final corner, should I say. This is going to be a 127. We have had to wait 21 laps. Across the line, there it is, a 127.9. That's crucial. That's really good at this stage of the race. I certainly haven't given up. Bez is there. He's, he's just going into the point where we can definitely gain some time. Gap is 2.8. What's it going to be when we go into turn three in a couple of metres away? Two seconds is the gap. I tell you what, we've taken chunks out of Peko Banyaya on that one. Gap is nine and a half seconds. Careful on the power, nice and gentle on the throttle. We are improving again. Oh, the knee's bouncing again, ladies and gentlemen. It's getting nerve-wracking here. Bez is 1.5 seconds away from us. Banyaya is into the Roche corner. He's about a corner and a bit ahead of us at this stage. I think this is game on. If we found those 127s that we desperately coveted, then I think we've got a chance here. This is critical. Ooh, steady. Don't want to get caught too much on that curb there. We have lost a bit of time, but don't forget, even if we only lose a tenth, it's still a 128 flat lap time. It's an excellent lap. This is going to get better. 7.2 is the gap. Oh my God, is this an absolute masterclass at the end of today's video? Across the line, is it an improvement? It's not, but it's still into the 127s. Two cheeky 127s coming in on lap 21 and 22. This is critical. We're, what, six seconds behind Banyaya. And we've got time here. We've got laps to do. Have they begun to struggle? Or is it this extra pace that we found? It could be a matter of both. Look at Bez losing the front a little bit there into the Ramos corner. We get onto the power, just trying to ah, keep the front wheel down. I was a bit eager on the power there, but we are finding time with the slipstream. Can we get through on Bez cleanly? I've got to get through one of my favorite riders in MotoGP without a hitch. I've got to hurry, I've got to get past. I cannot afford to lose any more time to Bez. The scooter's gone past my house there. I'm sorry if it interrupted the, <laughs> the recording. But now into left hand side. Through on Bez. We haven't lost too much time. Please don't hinder me. Please. He's hindering my progress. Bez being the absolute ultimate wingman for his VR46 Academy teammates. Oh my god, look at the state of that. We lost three tenths there. 
He did everything he could for his compatriots. But was it enough? Four seconds is the gap. Five laps to go. As long as... Oh my god, we could do this. We could definitely do it. This corner... To what, less than ten laps ago, we were on the floor. Seething that I'd blown this video. It's still on. Two... What? Through The gap is three seconds. Where did I pinch that second from? Oh, this is it. This is it. Steady into Ramus. Easy on the throttle. This is it. Apart from us losing those, that time to mark up at Zeki, that lap time was as good as if we were travelling on our own. So that is critical. What a race. I tell you what, if we get this one done... I'd call this the best video I've ever made. I can't believe this. It's had so many ups and downs. If we can pull this off after going arse over, <laughs> arse over tit into uh, turn one, then I can't believe this. <laughs> I cannot believe this. We absolutely blew it into turn one over earlier on. I can't believe it. We're catching up rather rapidly now. Our pace has been found right when it mattered the most. We're only going to lose two tenths on this one. So yeah, I'll be back into the 128. But the lower echelon, this is it. I can't believe this. On to the brakes then. Keep well away from the apex to turn one. Uh, not that far away, but you get the point. Here it comes. The gap is less than a second. We weren't even less than a second when we went into the pit. And yet here we are, 28 seconds behind, 28 seconds, disappeared, and now, it, oh look at Pecco, he's definitely struggling with tyres it seems, up on the inside, click knocks are clean, but it's done. The ride through penalty, started from the back of the grid, 120% difficulty, and it's, oh it's not over yet, Pecco, don't you do it, don't you deny us. After all the efforts, the stress and pressure, Pekko Banyaya will not deter us now, surely. Pinched first place, dispossessed him from a Ducati victory. This is happening. Oh my god. This is happening. I can't believe it. Three tenths of a second clear. AI will struggle here into the rent corner. We're gonna, we might finish this with a few seconds in our back pocket. Unbelievable. And there's still three laps to go. I can't believe it. I am absolutely speechless. We've done it. <laughs> I, no words. Absolutely none. I'm in such a rhythm now. The bike feels magnificent. I must confess, I have missed this KTM in the career mode since we moved over to Ducati. I know the Ducati was great. I know the Ducati is uh, a winning bike. There's a completely messed up 2B then. It, it, it feels magnificent. And you know what's really different as well? Which took me by surprise. Brad Binder never puts his leg out. And I'm so used to seeing that right or left boot go out into the corners. But of course with Brad Binder he doesn't do it. So his TCX boots stay on the motorcycle. As you can see right there on screen now. But this is it. 2.5 it is the gap. What a race. As I say, I'm quite happy to put this down as one of the best videos I've ever made. I have thoroughly enjoyed this one. I've ride thoroughly enjoyed it. <laughs> Excuse that pun. And it was a brilliant. I've absolutely loved this. The ride through, starting from the back of the grid, hardest difficulty in the game. Barely used power setting 3 to, what, to be honest as well. I think staying on power setting 2 is definitely the right choice because we probably could have caught up quicker but then we would have had to drop to power setting 1 and then how much speed you have with the lower power option. Difficult. Very, very difficult. The lap times are beginning now to dwindle. So we do drop back to the higher end of 128. But those two lap times of 127s were, were the key factor in today's video. Without those two 127s... I don't know whether we would have had the belief to catch them. It was just churning out the lap times. 
and seeing that 127 just gave me a tremendous boost. What a race. I have thoroughly enjoyed this. It's been brilliant. I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. If you have, let me know in the comments section down below. I thought about this video. I wanted to do it. I was, was telling you about it the other day and I just really wanted to get this one done. And the fact that we've done it, it, it fills me with an immense amount of pride. And if you enjoyed it, that was that's the absolute icing on the cake for me. I want to do way more challenges like this in the future. And just keep trying different creative ways to win on MotoGP games. Look at all the other riders there. They, well, that was us. That was us about 20 laps ago. Travelling on our own or at the back of the grid. Wondering what if in the GP if we didn't have the ride through penalty. Unbelievable. There's got to be more challenges like this we can try. I'm sure there is. I'll get to thinking and I'll see what I can do. But ladies and gentlemen, we are one lap away from concluding quite possibly my best race ever in MotoGP 23. The last time we'll tackle the Nicky Lauda curve, avoiding that apex like the plague. I don't feel too bad going into that corner. I only made a small mistake, but I am beginning to just worry about touching the apex. I've worried a lot about 2A and 2B here, but for the rest of this race has been stunning. I can't believe we're leading by such an advantage. But now it makes me believe that were we always this quick every lap? I think we must have been because we caught up to Pecco quite quickly. But I'm beginning to wonder if maybe the AI did suffer some sort of tyre wear, but that doesn't really happen in MotoGP 23. It doesn't happen in career mode, so maybe it only happens on 100% race distance? I don't really know. But all I do know is that uh, I am really, really happy, and I'm also shocked because if we didn't crash, the chances are we could have been 10 seconds ahead by now. Which is not something I expected. Not not at all. Could two ride through penalty be doing it? I think that's too much, but we'll see in the future. But guys and girls, two more corners to go. And we've done it. As I say, best video I've ever made. It's well up there. This has been brilliant. Ladies and gentlemen, one final corner and one massive victory for the aces. I've tried to get a wheelie, but unfortunately I can't get it to work. Who cares about the wheelie? I just care about the results. And that, my friends... Is one hell of a result. Ride through penalty. Challenge complete. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Ciao for now. Oh, hi. Didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Trace content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dr. Ace video.